on emissions reduction. Let's speak to our environment correspondent, Navin Singh Katka, who's here in London. Navin, let's start with these heat waves. How dramatic or unprecedented is what we're seeing in China? Well, it is unprecedented, as you know, 52.2 Celsius. That's massive. That's a record in itself. And then also, it's not just one place in Xinjiang. We're talking about the entire northern region, 45 plus going on almost every day now. And that's why they are saying this is very, very unprecedented. And then, mind you, just at the same time, we are seeing you know, all this tropical storm, lashing, thunderstorm, both extreme events, and people are very, very worried there. Mm. And we know that the U.S. envoy uh, John Kerry met with the Chinese Vice President Han Zheng yesterday, urging action on emissions reduction. But how likely is it that real concrete action will happen from either of them? Well, that's the big question, isn't it? That is what we have been asking all along. Uh, and, and even this time, uh, there were expectations that Kerry would ask his Chinese counterpart uh, uh, that, you know, what is being done about coal. Uh, because, as you know, China, although it has, it has done massive big works in terms of renewables, coal is still coming up. But then the question here is, when, we, when, when the press asked uh, Kerry, then he said that both sides were in general agreement. And now the, the, the focus, the laser focus is on COP28 coming up in UAE. And he said that both sides have agreed to support that. Now, again, the thing is, what does that mean then? Will, they actually, will that actually translate into emission reduction? That is the big question because coal with the Chinese part and not to forget the, the, the U.S. side. It is being criticized for its new oil and gas fields, as you know. So both sides pointing at each other, the top two emitters. What will they do? Indeed, is the question. And just what's the possibility of, you know, the world hitting any of these targets without having these two biggest emitters on board? Well, that's that, that's scientists, at least, uh, you know, when we listen to them, they say that's mission impossible because these are the two top emitters, uh, you know, little less than half of the total emissions. So this is this is without them. And that is why that was the argument how Obama kind of convinced back during in 2015 to bring China along. But then, you know, after that, what has what's been happening? That's the question. So we know that even despite repeated warnings, emissions have continued and continued and continued. And now in the wake of what we saw, the pandemic, battered economies, and then also after the energy crisis. So both sides are saying we've got energy security to deal with, not to forget that thing. So that is the thing. How do you deal with energy security at the same time dealing with climate crisis? That is the question hounding all of us, including the top two emitters. And I understand John Kerry has been speaking today. What did he have to say? Well, basically what he said was there's been some exchange of ideas and then he also made it particular that there was no dictation from the U.S.'s side. But what he added was there was a great agreement that both sides should now support this COP process, COP28. As you know, COP28 is going to be a, a massive, it's a significant uh, global stock taking about what countries are, are, are doing about it, basically about reductions of emissions. So he said that there was, there was an agreement that both sides should support this process. And the presidency, as you know, the presidency is a bit controversy. Uh, there's a controversy behind the presidency, but, but they said there's, if there's a large agreement that even the presidency would be supported. And what about China? Any remarks from them? Any, any word from them? Well, this time around, we haven't, we, haven't, we haven't seen anything per se. If you remember last time when Kerry visited a year ago, there was like, it, was, it was very, very uh, blunt. What they say was the climate negotiations can't be an oasis in a desert when everything else is so, so bitter. Uh, even if you had that oasis, that would turn into a desert, that kind of thing. But we haven't heard that kind of thing. So in that, that's why analysts are saying that we, we haven't heard anything bitter like that this time around. Therefore, it is definitely a change. And therefore, Kerry is saying that that is where the, the thread needs to be pulled on. And then, you know, the agencies from both sides will have to pick it up from here. Navin Singh Katka, our environment correspondent. Thank you very much. And of